from County College of Morris. This is CCM All Access. Hello, and welcome to CCM All Access, the show that brings you news and information from the County College of Morris. Students on campus, members of the community, people doing good things. I'm Brenda Todd, and today we will be speaking with two professors from CCM's photography program, Professor Slovens and Professor Swartz. Professor Slovens, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Brenda. It's great to see you again. <laughs> I, I was, um, when I decided to go back to school, your summer photo class, Introduction to Photography, I think it was, yep. right, was the first class I took, and I have to say, I have compared every professor since then to you, <laughs> and you still remain one of my very favorites. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when I started, that was kind of, you had probably been there maybe a year or two, you were kind of new here too, right? Yeah, I was pretty fresh at CCM. Yeah. yeah. So you, you got me at the highest level of energy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> it's all point. From there. It's from there. <laughs> so um, what really got you started? What brought you to CCM? And, and even before that, what got you started in photography? I think that when you were, when I met you, you were living in New York City. So you were working there as well, right? Yeah. Um, that's correct. So that's that's a, a loaded question. I know. Um, I apologize um, for that. So um, <laughs> let's let's see. Um, what brought me to CCM? Um, I think it was my love for community co college yeah. environment that brought me here, because uh, I had my education in Croatia where I was born. Um, I did my undergraduate and graduate school uh, in biochem there. Oh. And I always wanted to do something related to art. Wasn't really sure if that was photography or not, but I was artistic and scientific at the same time. So mm -hmm. I did science first. I didn't really find myself there. And then I wanted to run away from home. <laughs> <laughs> that I think that every 20 plus year old wa wants to do. So I was like, hmm, why not go to New York? Because um, that's the place to be. So I found uh, a LaGuardia Community College uh, oh. online and I couldn't believe the price or tuition uh, to go there. I think it was for international student. It was roughly a thousand dollars a semester, and everything else was twenty times more. So, so I said, okay, let me let me see what that is. I didn't really understand the concept of community college as well because we mm -hmm. don't have them in Croatia. So I went to community college, LaGuardia, and, and I really enjoyed the diversity of people, the diversity of ages, uh, educational backgrounds, and it just felt real. Uh, <clears throat> and I graduated from LaGuardia. I moved to, uh, to get my, my BFA, my MFA, and then I taught in art schools, uh, including Yale School of Art, where I got my MFA, and then Parsons. But I just didn't click with uh, students in that environment, and I went back to community college and taught at LaGuardia, and that's where I felt at home. So when I saw a post for a position at CCM, I was probably the first one to apply, and uh, I was ready, had my application all set, uh, and I was lucky to get the job, and, and then, uh, yeah, the rest is history, and now CCM is stuck with me. Yeah, I'm lucky to have you, lucky to have you, absolutely. So, uh, so then, are you still commuting from New York? No, I moved from the Bronx, where okay. I lived, um, I, I moved from Croatia to the Bronx, and I didn't even know that was the Bronx. It was just the only place that I could afford. Um, and then I realized, oh, look at that, that's the Bronx. <laughs> right. So, um, so I lived in the Bronx uh, for 15 years almost. Uh, oh, okay. And then from the Bronx, I moved to Union City uh, okay. in Jersey. So I lived okay. there now. Okay. So um, what kind of started you then in photography? You know, um, that first semester at CC, uh, uh, not CCM, LaGuardia Community mm -hmm. Co College, I took a lot of art classes because because of my previous degree, I didn't have to take any other classes, but just focusing on what I was in, what I was interested in. So I took painting, drawing, uh, photography. Um, I took design course uh, just to kind of find what I was really interested in. And uh, photography was then primarily taught as a darkroom course. And uh, that was it. It was it was love and first sight, mm -hmm. uh, dark room, making prints, exp uh, developing film. Um, you know, you, you kind of feel when you try things in life. Um, at the time, I was 26 uh, when I took my first photo course, mm -hmm. uh, and I 
tried many different things, uh, and yeah, you just kind of feel and you know that's what that's what it is, and and, right. and I just stuck with it. And did you feel obviously that you had kind of a natural eye for for lighting and and content and set up? Is, is that something? Um, you know what? Uh, God, was it the I technology can, uh, part of it? Um, that was you like... know, it was it was more the the my, my hands being involved in the process right. that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really enjoyed not not knowing what I was going to get un until you know the sh the shoot has passed and developing sure. it passed, and now here is a print, and then you realize that you know things are not as what you expected them to be when you photographed, uh, right. and 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 I like that. Uh, which is a good for which is good for somebody who is kind of uh, a control freak as mm -hmm. I am. It's nice to let it go um, of some of some of the control. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it was it was mo mostly that it was a slower process uh, uh, that allowed me to just immerse myself in it um, right. that I really enjoyed. But you can c control things with the digital editing part, right? Oh, you definitely so, can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so is that something you like as well? Um, I mean. If, if I have to choose a process that I really like is the slowest one, which is an old school large format camera mm -hmm. and film. That's what I really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. uh, video as well, uh, moving images, which is also a slower process, mm -hmm. as, as you know, yeah. especially with the editing part. Uh, and then uh, I still didn't quite gel with the di 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 digital yeah, yeah. photography for myself, uh, for my work. Oh, yeah. I, I teach it, and I know it, and I understand it. I know the benefits of it. Um, but if I have to photograph for my own work, I always go back to my first love, which is film. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when I started, I didn't have a camera, or at least not a very good one. And I didn't even have a computer at the time. <laughs> and that is something that you, do you still lend out students cameras and computers? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we redesigned our uh, area photography area completely. So that's something uh, we will introduce in the walkthrough oh, um, great. as we go. Right. Um, uh, we completely redesigned the classroom, which is n no longer a typical classroom with tables and students staring at the professor, right. professor having a mo mo monologue and students sleeping. Um, that's not what we have. We created more, more like a, a, a lounge, re relaxed oh, nice. uh, area. Nice. With sofas and and wa walls that are lit for prints to be right. put on and, and critiqued, um, so we have that really nice uh, contemporary classroom, um, mm -hmm. and then we have di digital digital lab, uh, in which every computer every student has their own computer. Um, this is where they do work on the computer and make prints. Um, we have anything from a 44 inch large computer uh, printer to smaller printers, oh, wow. depending on what students want to do. Um, this is where the video is also done in, in that area. Um, then we have shooting uh, uh, studio with lights and backdrops, and um, this is where students learn how to use lights. Um, and we have a darkroom area, which is redesigned as well, um, where students make oh, darkroom nice. prints. So it's a pretty nice setup um, yeah. that we have there. Very nice. Well, first of all, nobody was ever sleeping in your class. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about the curriculum then. What does um, what classes do we have that fall under that major, the photography major? Uh, you know what? It's it's fascinating actually how many courses we offer. Uh, um, I'm I'm just in the process of doing some articulation uh, agreements with some four-year schools, and we offer almost more than some of the four-year year schools, which is also a good thing uh, when it comes to two-year co colleges. Yeah. Um, so we have anything from 2D digital design, 3D digital design, um, which doesn't really sound like a photographic course, but it is, um, mm -hmm. uh, because photographers need skills that go beyond just taking a photo. So for example, in 2D digital design, students learn basics of Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign making a mock-up of a book. So they go through that process as they learn concepts of 2D design. Mm -hmm. um, in 3D design, um, students learn how to incorporate videos and photography in a 3D space, which is a pretty novel thing. Uh, uh, then we have photo one, photo two, color photography. Um, we have studio lighting, pro studio. Um, we have documentary photography, contemporary photography, history of photography, wow. photo appreciation. 
uh, we have um, uh, uh, photographic processes. Uh, we have integrated studio. And we have photography and the world dash critical perspectives. Wow. <laughs> wow, OK, I did all that. I named it all. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we just redesigned our uh, curriculum, which is something we do every few years, mm -hmm. um, just to be in touch with what's happening in four-year schools sure. and uh, what the industry needs for the students. So mm -hmm. when, if they want to go back to the workforce or if they want to get into the workforce immediately from school, they have all the skills they need for that. Mm -hmm. If they want to transfer, their, their, their credits transfer. Um, so yeah, we make sure that we follow mm -hmm. what is happening um, in the world, not just in our yeah, yeah. in our uh, you know CCM. Speaking of getting into the workforce, um, I was surprised by the time I was taking photo to how many students had their portfolios together, were going out, were shooting weddings and um, headshots, and were working. You know, these are very marketable skills. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and how has um, the curriculum changed? You, you said that you know, you've changed things a little bit, mm -hmm. the classes a little bit, to accommodate for technology and social media and this kind of thing. What, what's an example of that? Um, well, it's also the delivery of I information. Um, I don't think that professors are necessarily what they used to be 20 years ago, which right. is the source of information. I think that professors now point where information can be found mm -hmm. um, and then uh, train and educate students in troubleshooting problems. Um, mm -hmm. The issue and the good thing and the bad thing at, at the same time with programs that heavily relay on, rely on te technology is that the technology changes. So whatever we teach in our classes in three or four years when students graduate, it will be obsolete. So, Students right. need to know how to find new things without us telling them where that is mm -hmm. or, or what that new thing is. Absolutely. So, um, so we constantly in our classes teach students to do research uh, and then bring things they found to mm -hmm. the classroom. And then as problems occur, teach them how to solve that issue. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to, of course, skills that they need to know as a, a photographer. But, um, but more troubleshooting uh, is what is an important skill to have. Have you found that your own photography has evolved since just from being a professor? Maybe the students have taught you some things. So many things. Yeah. So many things. Um, you know, we get stuck in the things that we know. Right. Um, and if I didn't teach, I don't think that many of, God, I don't even know. A, a lot of the, the projects that I do probably wouldn't develop in the way that they did mm -hmm. um, because I teach students to relax and to embrace mistakes and um, you know but it's also hard to um, practice what you preach <laughs> so um, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to make mistakes in my own uh, work so it's 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 great to say that to the class it's perfectly fine to fail right. that's what we do um, and then to remind myself that failure is part of the process um, which brings you to uh, projects that you would never necessarily do. I mean, for one of my, one of my projects that was um, I, I, I exhibited, I created a rug, which has nothing to do with photography, but mm -hmm. it, it had to be done um, for that particular project. So, mm -hmm. so I went to a rug company and, and, and for them to show me how you, how you manually sew rugs. So, right. so we went through the process and, um, and, I, and I learned how to do it, which mm -hmm. I don't think that I would do if I wasn't Relax enough that it's perfectly okay that that rug looks like, um, I don't know what's the appropriate word to say, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> okay, let me just put it that way. It doesn't look good. Uh, and, um, and and actually, rug didn't look the way I wanted it to look, but mm -hmm. it looked really raw and energetic and emotional. Yeah. It's kind of hard yeah. to explain, but, sure. but um, it would never have happened. Probably if, much like you felt when you were creating the rug. Oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting where, where some one thing leads you, yep. how it leads you to another. Yep. Well, I just want to thank you so much for being here. And I know that I'm not alone when I say, that, again, that you are one of my very favorite professors and that you are an example of someone who really puts student success first. Um, you were instrumental in, in bringing me to my next career. And I want to thank you so much for honoring me with this interview. Thank you, Brenda. <laughs> Appreciate it. I'm Andrea Lucia, a graduate of County College of Morris. 
At CCM, I gained a high quality education, was involved with clubs on campus, and performed university research in tissue engineering. My CCM education prepared me for ongoing success. Today, I am at Cornell University, studying engineering and performing research in cardiac tissue engineering. The professors and staff at CCM helped me to start right and finish strong. And we're back on CCM All Access. I'm Brenda Todd, and we're here with Professor Nicole Schwartz. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So you are an assistant professor with the photography program. I That's am. right. And are you relatively new here? I'm not. I actually have been here since the fall of 2018. I was okay. hired as adjunct faculty, and I've been teaching here since. But this is my first semester as full-time faculty. Oh, and how is that transition going? Really excellent. Yeah, you like it a lot. I love it. So you were saying earlier that you live a couple of hours away. So I guess now that you're full-time, you'll be moving a little closer. I will. I'm currently <laughs> near Philadelphia, so it's okay. quite a trek to get up here. Yes. Uh, but it's worth it. Yeah. Well, so um, what what classes are you taking over? What you know? What parts of the curriculum are you taking over? Um, I feel like I've been really lucky that even as an adjunct, I was able to take over some courses that are pretty high up on the photography curriculum, uh, like portfolio. This will be my second year teaching portfolio class, which is a thesis preparation course for students. Um, and I'm also teaching Pro Studio this semester, oh, which okay. is a professional development course, but it also combines more advanced studio practices for the students. So they begin to develop their portfolio as they kind of embark on either entering the workforce or transferring. So then these are classes, obviously, that sound like they're toward the end of um, of the They're both or? taken in the student's final semester. Yeah. And so then portfolio, what are, um, what are some of the things the students need to focus on with a portfolio? Portfolio is really great because it gives the student freedom to choose the project that they want to focus on and they dedicate all of their time during the semester to the development of mm -hmm. that single project. And it gets mounted and is displayed in a show here at CCM's gallery. Oh, that's great. Yeah, once a year. And this year, it's, you're going to do something a little different, right? A little different with it? Yeah, so instead of it just being photography, it'll be photography and design. So it'll okay. be sort of a collaboration across departments. Oh, nice. Yeah, I know that in the past you've done that. You've, you've done um, your display here, and then the design program has done it at, like, the Morristown Museum or something. In the I, past. I am not yeah. sure. So I think we used nicer. to not have it here, okay. um, but we've had it in the gallery for quite a few years now. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to see that. It's amazing what the students come up with. And, and so how do you direct a student who is kind of really f floundering around about what, what direction they want to go in or, or, you know, maybe they have a lot of different talents and they, a lot of different interests um, where photography is concerned, but but you, do you f try to focus them in one particular direction or would somebody's portfolio be okay if it was really diverse as well? So the students are encouraged to have cohesion in their mm -hmm. like, portfolio that they finish the course with. Um, during the beginning of the semester, they're encouraged to be open and flexible with what they want to embark on for the semester. And we go through a variety of different creative writing prompts to kind of target where each student's interests are. And then the first critique, they're allowed to have different visions, um, but then we kind of narrow that focus as we progress through the semester. So by the second critique, they're continuously working on one project that they kind of landed on and decided to devote their time towards. And do you also work with them with interviews and how to, how to talk to people about jobs and, and how to really display their portfolio? In portfolio, that doesn't come up as much, but in mm -hmm. Pro Studio, um, they do learn kind of the beginnings of what they would need to know as a freelancer, kind of creating their own photography business. Mm -hmm. um, so we learn how to build a resume, how to invoice a client, how to build a website, 
um, building their brand, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and they're lucky too because this semester, with the support uh, of CTL, um, we have visiting professionals coming across different disciplines in photography, talking to students, offering them insight into different fields that they could, you know, mm -hmm. put their degree to work in. So expand on CTL. What is that? The Center for Teaching and Learning. Okay. Okay, so they, well, you work together with them, that's great. I was awarded a mini grant so that I could bring those okay. professionals in. Great, great. And, um, and you also head up a club, right? Yes, photo club. Yes, and what do you do there? Is that for all photo students, no matter what level they're at? Um, so it could be photo or non-photo. Anyone is welcome to join photo club as long as they are a CCM student. Mm -hmm. um, so on our student advisory board, we actually have two students who are non-photo majors who are participating in the club. Um, and coming up, we will be having a headshot event. Um, oh, nice. And the students are also planning to work with Dover College Promise. Mm -hmm. um, so they're gonna be partnering as student mentors with high school students um, who are in 10th grade at a Dover High School. Okay. And then they are also interested in partnering with animal shelters to photograph pets so that they can oh, become great. adopted. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, they're very passionate and have a whole bunch of ideas for the semester. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, that's, and now how long has Photo Club been going on? It's been around for a while, but it mm -hmm. had a hiatus because of the pandemic. Sure. Um, so our first meeting was two weeks ago. So okay, good. yeah, we're, you know, going full steam ahead. Yeah, great. So you had a good turnout for that? Yes, definitely. Oh, that's wonderful. Lots of students want to be involved. So then how long have you been into photography yourself? Um, what feels like my whole life. My grandfather taught me photography when I was seven. Um, and so it was always a hobby. Um, but he passed really suddenly of an aneurysm when I was oh. 14. And then I decided to do more with photography in my high school. Um, something that is still around that I love is teen arts and through teen arts where I went to school in South Jersey, um, I was awarded best photograph and that oh. prompted me to think, oh, could I actually do something with photography? So all of my education is in photography. I got my Bachelor of Science in photography from Drexel in Philadelphia and then I got my master's of photography at the Rhode Island School of Design. Do you remember the first uh, camera that your grandfather showed you photography with? Yes, it was a point and shoot Canon, uh -huh. um, black, I still own it. Oh. Um, doesn't take great photos, but it's a fun camera and it's very portable. Mm -hmm. um, but from that camera, he then showed me on a DSLR, uh, Canon A1 mm -hmm. that my father had. So technology is constantly changing, and like Professor Slowens was saying, uh, you have to keep up constantly with that. Uh, do you think that there's more to being a photographer? I mean, obviously there is, but what do you think those things are other than keeping up with the technology and being maybe very good at technology? Do you think there's, there are other things that make you a good photographer? Um, you know, kind of mirroring or echoing what he was saying about film, I think there is really, um, an importance was slowing down. Mm -hmm. um, when I learned photography, analog was starting to fade away. Um, I learned digital, and then when I went to college, I was taught analog, and then I kind of fell in love with that slow, meticulous process because it really requires you to think about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And film is also precious. You don't have unlimited amount of images that you can capture. Mm -hmm. You have to be really decisive with what yes. you actually capture. And it's also, it's very expensive to shoot analog today. Um, so I would say that's something that kind of goes away. So although I think it's important to educate yourself with evolving technology, something that I always still bring into the classroom is the process of slowing down, the process of thinking about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so even though things are evolving, I would say the core of photography, I like to always link it back to analog um, because I think in a lot of ways students take for granted um, that precious nature of photography because sure. we are so overwhelmed by images mm -hmm. all the time. And I remember learning that it was really important to capture the moment, to look for the moment, wait for the moment, capture the moment. How do you, uh, how do you capture the moment? What's, 
what's a way of doing that? Uh, well, you could be capturing an authentic moment, mm -hmm. or you could restage a moment. I think a lot of times students think that their photographs have to be depicting truth, but I think as someone who primarily loves to capture portraits, there's no harm in asking someone to repeat a gesture. Yes, yeah. it's not you know the gesture that you saw right. in the moment, but you were drawn to that gesture or pose or you know whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's no harm in recreating those moments right. because I think sometimes through the act of recreation, something better can unveil, its, unveil itself for yeah. the. And as you um, get into the professional world, it's very important that you aren't afraid to ask people to recreate a moment or direct people. Yeah, and I think that's really important for the students mm -hmm. to step into that role as the director yeah. because a lot of times if they're working with someone, they might have you know, never sat for a photograph. You know, how can the student be prepared to make that subject feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, speaking of the professional, the student um, looking toward being a professional, I remember, I know that it's very hard, uh, especially for students, for any artist, to really ask for compensation. Um, to say, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, to, to know what to charge and to even charge people. You know, you have friends and family and friends of family who start saying, hey, can you take my headshot or could you do a wedding for us? Can you just snap a few pictures for this or that? What is, do you have a philosophy on, on artists and charging for their work? What do you teach them? I think a lot of my students struggle with that. Um, and I think, you know, I tell them like, it's fine if you wanna do something pro bono, like for someone that you know you love. But at the same time, I think it is important. You know, it, it's your work. Like this is what you wanna do for a living. This is your profession. Most people don't just do jobs for free. There's a lot of you know effort that goes into not only photographing but the post production of the images as well. So. You know, I encourage students to not be afraid to kind of put their foot down and, you know. Sure, sure. Be proud of, you know, themselves and be proud of the fact that they're going about trying to be a freelance photographer. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of invoicing a client, we kind of go over just industry standard prices and kind of compare that with people that have been in the field working for 15 years in comparison right. to when you're just starting right. out. Exactly. We also talk about the importance of licensing images. Sure, yeah. Well, um, just one final question, and that is, uh, what has teaching taught you? Uh, teaching has taught me everything. I think it's a constant circle. Um, you know, you give to your students and mm -hmm. they give back to you. Um, you know, I like to think that I mentor them, but in a lot of ways I think that they mentor and shape me. Um, you know, as Hervoy had, you know, yeah. put it, it's, I wouldn't be able to do some of the things that I do without, you know, seeing them. We kind of act as mirrors to each other. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah it's honestly the most rewarding experience. Well, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you, you for, for coming me. to CCM and um, for being on the show and letting me interview you today. So thank you very much. Thank you. This concludes another edition of CCM All Access. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.